deep within the empty north, a cave can be found. Far below the crumbling surface of the deserted hobgoblin mine, this wretched place is home to the blackest of dragons, the greatest of demons, and revenant souls lost in wars between gods. Above the unsettling silence of the returned, and the roars of beasts no man should live to speak of, one sound echoes so loud that it is heard by the gods of this realm and those beyond. What is that sound? Just listen. Tu madre es una perra. Yeah, that sound is a gold farmer talking shit about your mum in Spanish. There were too many gold farmers in the Revenant cave, and they were saying too many unsavory things about my mother. But how could I, a truly terrible PKer, possibly fight back? Well, last January, I devised a plan. The Tactical Nuke. A one-shot kill which is almost guaranteed and is easy to execute. Ambitious. So what was the grand plan? At the core of the nuke lies nine accounts. Noobs level 9 combat, all of which are controlled by me. But these noobs, they have a deadly secret. They are level 46 prayer and they are using retribution. As they die, everyone and everything in their immediate area takes a mass of inescapable damage. When the nuke is armed and ready to launch, it should be as easy as sending the noobs flying towards the target and detonating them with a 10th account. And in the blink of an eye, boom. Everyone in the blast radius goes from full HP to lumbridge. So there it is, the RuneScape Tactical Nuke. Was it going to work? I had no idea, but I was intent on finding out, so it was time to start experimenting. Before I could start any tests, I first needed to create my horde of noobs. After identifying hundreds of cars, stairways, and bicycles, I had registered all nine accounts and ran them through Tutorial Island. Each account was going to need at least level 46 prayer, which turned out to be big easy. Since they were all level 3, there was essentially no risk in the wilderness at all. I could use the Chaos Temple Altar for massive XP boosts without any fear. Each account took about 10 minutes to train up and only took 78 Dagonoth bones, costing about 1.2 mil each. But there was one other consideration when training up prayer. The maximum damage dealt by retribution is determined by your prayer level. Specifically, its max hit is 25% of your prayer level rounded down. So if I trained up to 48 prayer, I'd get a bunch more damage. So 48 prayer it was. All in all, the accounts took under 3 hours to make, and just like that, I was ready to run the first tests. Each account could deal a max of 12 damage when detonated, and that placed the max hit of the nuke at 108. Pretty lethal for a bunch of level 9s. But I needed to figure out two major details. How was I going to detonate the damn thing, and how much damage was the nuke actually going to do? And with those two questions in mind, I jumped into the Clan Wars white portal. Test number one aimed to just give me a starting point, somewhere to work from to try and figure out how exactly I was going to detonate the nuke. I stacked up the accounts, turned on retribution, and just started whipping away. If all was as I hoped it would be, my main should take all of the damage from the nuke as long as all of the accounts die and I was next to them when they did. But by the time the last account fell, I'd only taken 13 damage. Less of a nuclear warhead, more of a wet fart. Clearly something had gone wrong, but I wasn't exactly sure what. I needed to rule out a few possibilities, so I jumped straight back in with another test. For test number two, I tried using a Chin Chomper. This would deal damage to all of the accounts at once, guaranteeing that I'm in combat with all of the accounts and that I would get kill credit, just in case either of those things were making a difference. I stacked up all the accounts and threw the Chin. All of the accounts died, I got kill credit for every single one, but... I still took barely any damage. At this point, I began to wonder if combat stats were having an effect on the damage dealt by Retribution, so I recruited a friendly passerby to help me find out for sure. For test number three, my new friend lowered their defense level with Zami Bruce, and then we both stood in the blast radius. As I chinned the noobs, I took the highest hit yet, a 30, while my assistant took 15 damage. While it was only one test, it was enough to doubt that combat stats were playing a major role. 
and that only really left one possibility for what was going wrong. The fourth and final test aimed to answer one key question. Can retribution trigger retribution? If not, the dream of any kind of chain reaction is out of the window, and detonating this thing was going to be much harder than I had thought. To test this, I sat two of the explosive noobs next to each other and got one of them onto very low hit points. I turned retribution on for both, and then killed the first. As that first account died, the retribution killed the second, but the second account did not explode. And I had my confirmation, retribution cannot trigger retribution. Fuck. With Retribution unable to trigger Retribution, a detonation needed to be achieved in a single Chinchomper attack. Every single noob in the nuke must die in the same hit. I needed to get as close as I could to guaranteed success, and that meant bringing the hit points of each account down from 10 to 1. For my needs, Dwarven Rock Cakes were perfect, but they came with a quest requirement. 10 cooking, 10 fishing, cook's assistant, fishing contest, another cook's quest, and the Dwarven subquest for Recipe for Disaster. From start to finish, zero to rock cake, it took a few hours of rapidly clicking different clients. So despite the unexpected complication, the time taken to set up the accounts was still remarkably low. With my rock cakes ready to munch, the boys returned to Clan Wars for the big one. If the nuke didn't work, with all nine accounts being killed simultaneously by a single chin chomper, the whole theory was dead in the water. Three, two, one, boom. It worked. One tick and over 60 damage. The first successful detonation and proof of concept. But hey, let's not get ahead of ourselves. It was just one hit, right? Well, no, it wasn't just one hit. That is the secret beauty of the RuneScape nuke. It isn't just one big hit, it's lots of smaller hits added together, which means that rather than the probability of each hit being a flat line between zero and its max, instead it looks like this. Hitting around half of the max hit is highly likely. It's insanely consistent with its damage, and while hitting half of your max hit doesn't sound so great, keep in mind that the max hit of the nuke can easily go much, much higher than 108. But we'll get to that in just a minute. First things first, trying out the nuke in a real PvP scenario. Before I could get going in the wilderness, first I needed to complete the waterfall quest on all nine accounts. The higher the combat level of the accounts in the nuke, the more potential targets I have. But since I was just starting out, my only concern at this time was making sure that my pure, which I would be using to detonate the nuke, could attack all of the accounts. And with that out of the way, I was ready to head into the wilderness. All I needed to do was decide exactly where I was going to PK. The Revenant Cave was an option, but most of the people there were much higher combat levels. So instead, I decided to go to Black Chin Chompers. It turns out that there are a bunch of gold farming hunters who hang around in the multi-combat area. They're very confident because they have high defense and prayer levels, but the nuke doesn't care about your defense or prayer levels, so they were the perfect targets. Easy targets, sure, but I just wanted to practice the technique and sanity check my tests in Clan Wars. Oh my goodness, that was a- Did I get them both? I got them both! Double kill! And go for it. Come on! Yes, we got him. It took a good while to find anyone above level 50, and when I finally found one, I bloody splashed my snare. But thankfully, he stayed on the same world and I was able to take another swing. That's a hit. Thank goodness. Right. This is the one. Come on. Oh, yes. One hit. Absolutely beautiful. After my first trip was a success, I was convinced that the nuke was going to work at revs. But it was time to make it stronger. I needed to take it from something that level 20 should probably be concerned about to something which would strike fear into the hearts of anyone wearing a snakeskin bandandi. If I wanted to effectively kill gold farmers at revs, I needed more combat levels. My chosen strategy was to quest my way to 44 combat. To do that, I had to complete Death Plateau, Vampire Slayer, 
Fight Arena, Tree Gnome Village, Witch's House, Merlin's Crystal, and Holy Grail. I bought all of the items that I would need on my main and traded them all over to the noobs. The first quest I went for was Death Plateau, and that took an hour. Next up was Witch's House, which took about another hour. Fight Arena next on the list, another hour. After that, it was Tree Gnome Village, an hour and a half. Then it was time for Merlin's Crystal, an hour and 20 minutes, and definitely one of the quests I am less familiar with. And finally, Holy Grail, an hour and a half. I also did Vampire Slayer somewhere in the mix, but it was so intense and exciting that I forgot to record. I know I'm being scarce with the details here. I could do a deep dive on using a Rune Halley for the Black Knight Titan, or prayer flicking the witch's experiments, or even the glitchy, annoying piece of shit enemies in the fight arena, switching aggro every two seconds trying to take me out. But honestly, it was all very boring. Clicking through nine clients to press space and pass through the dialogue, that's about as depressing as it gets playing RuneScape. By the time I'd finished the questing, I had to get like a few hundred XP in attack and strength, and then the accounts were level 44. Those extra combat levels opened up an additional 16 combat levels worth of people to kill at revs. However, combat levels were only half of the equation. I still needed to up the damage of the nuke. Increasing the damage of the nuke. A simple task with two very clear options. I would either need to get more prayer levels to allow retribution to deal more damage, or I would need to add more accounts to the nuke. And this is where I made a major mistake in my progress. A mistake which cost me a great deal of GP and a great deal of time. I started the whole tactical nuke strategy back in January of 2019. But after I encountered those first issues at Clan Wars, I decided to shelve the idea and come back to it at a later date. That later date was about 348 days later in January 2020. And in that time I was away, someone updated the old school wiki page for Chin Chompers. In October 2019, they updated the page to say that grey and red Chin Chompers can hit a maximum of 11 targets, and that black Chin Chompers can hit up to 12. I'd always thought that it was 9 for grey and red and 10 for black, but I had never confirmed this. And because it was added in October and it hadn't yet been reverted, I foolishly trusted the info and committed a great deal of time to it without confirming it first. I decided that it would be cheaper and faster to add more accounts to the nuke than to get a bunch of prayer levels. So I got straight to work. Apple Herder 7, Apple Herder X, and Apple Herder 0 were created. I blasted them up to 49 prayer and I was straight onto questing. And after about six or seven hours, I was finally finished. Hours upon hours of quest grinding across multiple accounts, and I was finally ready to try out my new and improved nuke. 144 maximum damage, and it would probably hit around a 77. I could not wait to try this out. And then, when I went to log in and do just that, I encountered a problem. It turns out, you can only log into 10 accounts at a time from a single network. But I was already so committed to this whole 12 account idea, and where there's a will, there's a way. So I grabbed my laptop, I installed remote desktop software, I set up Runelight, I set up a VPN, and I found a way. So I set the accounts up and detonated the nuke. Ready? I'm ready, mate. Uh... Bruh. <laughs> that was so bad. How much damage did you take? I currently have 43 hit points. So it did what, 47? Yeah. Uh, not great. Probably just some bad luck, right? So I set it up again. Boom. Come on, I believe. No! I got hit, though. Yeah, but... I got hit for 45. But why does it keep doing so little damage? That's what I don't understand. Okay, now, now I was getting worried. So I decided to double-check that information from the wiki. I set up all of the accounts with auto-retaliate turned on. If my Chin Chomper hit all of them, they would all auto-retaliate and run to attack me. If any were left behind, I had a problem. Son of a bitch. And that was that. Apple Herders 7, X, and 0 were officially worthless, and I had only one option remaining. It was time to spend an ungodly amount of money training all of the accounts up to level 68 prayer. Level 68 prayer would take roughly 550 Dagonoth bones per account. It would give them all a max hit of 17, which is a drastic improvement over their current 12. So I did it. 
I decided to spend the 50-ish mil I needed to get 68 prayer on each account. Eager to get all of this over with as soon as possible so I could finally get to killing some people, I headed back out to the Chaos Temple and started sacrificing bones. And hours passed. One account down, two accounts down, three, four, and then... <laughs> then... <laughs> oh my god. Then the truly unexpected happened. Apple Herder. Apple Herder 1. Apple Herder 2. Apple Herder 3. Apple Herder 4. Apple Herder 5. Permanently banned. All permanently banned. No appeal option. Why? Macroing. As I'm sure you can imagine, I was a little bit peeved. I had put so much time and effort into this idea that if I wasn't able to finish it, it would haunt me for the rest of my life. And I tell you what, there's nothing quite as discouraging as getting all of your accounts wiped out for macroing mages completely out of the blue. But being the complete moron that I am, I decided that I wasn't going to give up. So I made four more accounts, introducing Apple Herders A, B, C, and D. And the first thing I did was chucked bones on them and started to train directly to 68 prayer. And that's when it happened. After I'd spent a ton of money on goddamn bones and bonds, I was made aware that my Apple Herders had been unbanned. Which is just brilliant. It's fantastic news. I was ecstatic. I was also 25 mil in the hole. But whatever. I finished the nuke. Finally. Nine accounts. 46 combat. 68 prayer. And I didn't let a second go by before I got those accounts ready to go and kill people at the Rev Cave. Sure they're all running and then let's go straight in we're good come on please be here please be here he's here okay did we get him we got him we got him we got him there's no revs oh my god was that it yes that was it finally go on Dude, that was, that was him, that was him. Oh my god, bank loot. Oh no, he's below 30. No, he isn't, no, he isn't. Go on, go on, go on. I can't stand here. Oh my god, yes! I got him one bang. Yes! What'd I get? Anything good? Some good stuff. Tossing stun grenade! Oh. Did I get them? Yes! I got them. Yes! <laughs> yes, dude! They just arrived, so it's a terrible loot, but honestly. Oh, dude, there's not 32. <laughs> His day has come. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Tizar kept on. Tizar kept on. Not only did the tactical nuke work, but it was almost flawless. Providing I landed my snare and the nuke made its way to the target successfully, the kill rate was almost 100%. Oh my god, I got him. Come on. Oh my god. He was yes. half HP already. That was easy. Of course, I could always have terrible luck. I could splash my snare, or a rev might have killed the noobs before I could set them off. But those problems were rare. The nuke was everything I had dreamed that it would be. Boom. <laughs> oh my goodness. Dude, that wasn't even a bad leap. I hit him. One shot. Lovely jubbly. <laughs> As the day went on, I pushed it closer and closer to its limits. I went from killing level 60s with 65 hit points, to level 70s with 80 hit points, and then level 75s with 85 hit points. All up to this moment. A player with 94 hit points. A rare find in my combat bracket, so I had to make it count. 
Miraculously, my snare hit, and it did two damage, leaving 92 left to be Ooh. dealt. Oh my god, that guy had like 92 hit points. Holy crap. Those remaining 92 hit points were eviscerated. 92 damage in a single hit. Dealt by level 46s, all controlled by one person. But hang on a minute, that wasn't even a full nuke. No, by some stroke of luck, as I ran in, I had forgotten to enable retribution on one of the accounts, and the Revenant Knight just so happened to kill that one as we ran past. If it had attacked any other account, it would have set off the nuke early. And if that wasn't lucky enough, the nuke itself with only 8 accounts left still did 92 damage. Lucky doesn't even begin to describe that. But I wasn't done just yet. I happened to find one more player with 94 hit points. It will take an immense stroke of luck to make that work. Which means that we have to go for it. Please, no, him. I got him, I got him. Go, 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 oh go, go, no, go. look at the mini-map! Oh dear lord. Dude, did I get him? Did yeah. I get him? Oh my yeah, god, no way did I get him. You... Holy crap, that was 94 hit points. Holy mother. <laughs> Dude, this entire clan just watched that happen. I'm weak. I couldn't even tell what happened there, it's just so chaotic. Dude, these guys are clearing this entire world. <laughs> I just went Holy in and one bang that guy. <laughs> It pains me to say that looking back on this clip, it isn't quite the clean nuke KO that I was looking for. It's pretty apparent that that second Chinchompa that my pure threw ended up doing 3 damage to finish them off. So the nuke only did 91 damage. But I did manage to KO that Revenant Knight at the same time, and I love this clip because of the clan that flooded in at the same time. Was it a perfect kill? Absolutely not. But was it my favourite? 100%. Sadly, it was around this time that the high scores stopped working, and that meant that I couldn't find out people's HP level. Without that information, it was pointless going for the next biggest high hit, so instead I changed my focus. Given that these accounts are very low levels, they can attack very low levels, and some of the most lucrative people to kill in the Rev Caves are Gold Farmer's Mules. Oh my god, there they are. Okay, we're on. Oh no, 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 not like this dragon. I hit him. And he's down. What's the loot gonna be? Got him. Oh my god, oh. I knew it! Look at that! Holy that is shit. huge! Oh Absolutely, mate, 100% worth. <laughs> oh my god, god. man! Two, and that's not even the blood runes! 2 0 in one level 14. Let's go. Come on. If I didn't get that kill, I would have been absolutely peeved. Oh my goodness, again, man. Holy crap, I need... Oh, where's the where's the ether? Where's the ether? Oh my god, they're still here. They are on the same world, still. Oh my goodness, am I going to get the same mule twice? It's been like 25 minutes. Whatever you do, honor the imp. I'm actually going to fail because of the imp. Oh, it's on me, yes. Jackpot, man. More loot! When it came to these mule accounts, I absolutely cleaned house. They were incredible loots and they were guaranteed kills. The issue was that they were very, very difficult to find. It was very rare that I would find these accounts and I think that's because, you know, the smarter ones would just stay logged out most of the time. But still, I got maybe 5 or 6 kills on these things and that resulted in about 10 mils worth of loot. 10 mil loot from just a few kills sounds pretty profitable, right? Well... No. These accounts cost so much money and time to make that profit was never an option. But it wasn't the goal either. The goal was to have a very easy to execute strategy which resulted in almost guaranteed kills. And if that is the criteria for success, the tactical nuke was an absolute success. It cost me a ton of money, it cost me a ton of time, but it was honestly some of the most fun I've ever had PKing on Old School RuneScape. There is something so enjoyable about the spectacle of it, the ridiculous nature of the strategy. Being one person controlling 10 accounts at once to get instant kills. Would I recommend anyone try this method? Absolutely not. But it was 100% worth it. 
And I think my favourite thing at the end of all of this was the 39.5 kill death ratio on my detonator account. 